What's up and welcome to Force Cult everyone. I'm Ryan. And I'm Tracy. Now this is our premiere episode and as the name suggests we are a show all about Star Wars. There are a lot of shows and podcasts out there already discussing Star Wars but we wanted to do something a little different. We actually want to have fun discussing one of the biggest fandoms ever and not try to make you feel like you don't know enough about Star Wars to love it. Don't know what the acronym TIE stands for in TIE Fighter? Who fucking cares? TIE Fighters are badass. If you love Star Wars in any way, shape, or form, this is the place for you. Now sit back, relax, and join us as we discuss a galaxy far, far away. All right, so as Ryan already mentioned, Force Cult is basically a show where we get to indulge in our casual love of Star Wars. By casual, I don't mean that we don't like it as much as everyone else. We're just not assholes about it. But we've been fans of Star Wars pretty much our whole lives. So Ryan, you're a little bit older than me. Maybe you should explain how you first came in contact with the fandom. All right, well, uh, I was born in 1980. Uh, Empire was released then, but I was just an infant. So even though I was technically in the theater, uh, I did not know what was going on. But Return of the Jedi was released in 83. I was three years old, still young, but I knew what was going on. So I was super excited when my parents took me to see it. Um, and I wanted every toy that had to do with that. And they were more than happy to buy me all that stuff. Um, I had all the figures and everything, but my favorite thing was the lightsaber. And the lightsaber in 1983 was nothing like they are now. It was this cheap little black plastic, almost like a flashlight. It basically was a flashlight with this long plastic uh, red tube. Yay, I'm a Jedi. Uh, it was hollow and it had these little holes in the end of it, so when you waved it around, it made this kind of whooshing sound. Um, so it was a very cheap, terrible toy, but back then, I was a fucking Jedi. So. Um, it was amazing. Um, at the time we had a dog. Uh, it was a Lhasa Apso. Uh, you can look it up. Uh, they're kind of ridiculous looking dogs, but it was kind of a dirty white looking dog. Um, and I decided that I was going to make that dog into a Tauntaun. So I strapped Luke to it and my dog hated me, but it was a terrible dog, so I didn't really care. Um, my parents thought it was funny. Uh, the, I got bit many times, but... He was a Tauntaun. Um, just ever since then, I was addicted to Star Wars as a little kid, and I've never turned back. So I'm a little younger. I was born in 1987, so I wasn't actually alive for any of the films. So basically, I was playing at a friend's house, and I found Return of the Jedi in a box. And I was just really drawn to the cover. It just looked really neat to me. So I watched it and just completely fell in love. I loved everything about it. I loved that it was a different galaxy, that it was in space, that it had aliens. Um, I loved Han Solo. I, know. I loved Princess Leia. So it just kind of opened up this whole new obsession for me as a kid. And then I watched all the other films. I watched A New Hope and Empire. Um, Empire became my favorite. But yeah, it was just kind of weird because I was like this seven-year-old girl and I had this weird obsession with Star Wars and no one else liked it at the same time as me. But then the, I think it was in 1991 or two or maybe later, the movies actually came back into theaters and I got to watch them in theaters and drag my parents and make them stand in line. And that was actually pretty cool because it was like I was just getting into it and then all of a sudden I got to go see all the movies back in theaters. So that was pretty awesome. Right, so given that I we both like Star Wars our whole lives, um, what do you think about Disney acquiring the franchise? I think Disney acquiring it is awesome. Everybody obviously had a knee-jerk reaction to it. Or not everyone, but a lot of people. They freaked out because in their minds are like, Disney, this little kid company, and there's no way they could take over Star Wars. But uh, Disney is a massive company. They've been around a long time, and they've been giving us awesome movies and memories forever. And they know what they're doing. And um, I think that there's a lot of people at Disney that are fans, and I think that's going to help a lot whenever they're creating all this new Star Wars content, because I think fans at this point are probably the best people to create it, because it kind of got taken over by fans. Uh, George Lucas, it was his original idea and passion, but he was the creator of this. He was He's not a fan of it, and there's a big difference there. Um, you can like your work, but 
the fan side and the creator side is completely different. That's why he kept wanting to tinker with it because uh, when you're a creative, you are never done with your project. You just it's never good enough. So. Uh, and as we see that upset a lot of people he went in back and added a whole bunch of stuff and a lot of CG stuff and change stuff and it just interrupted all of our memories of the Star Wars you know um, so I think that JJ will do a good job even though everything he done everything he's done I haven't like flipped out about but uh, he's good at what he does and he's obviously a big fan and uh, I think from what we've gotten so far, the le leaks and everything, I think we can see that he's trying to make this true to what we all hold dear. So I think Disney is on the right track. Yeah, I agree. I just think people did the same thing. They had this weird knee-jerk reaction because they're thinking Disney and Disney princesses, but they forget that they did such a good job with all the Marvel stuff. And I mean, Lucasfilm and Disney have had a relationship like Star Wars stuff has always been at Disneyland and it's always been amazing. And they're being really careful with it. Like you said, they're treating it like it's, you know, something they really have held dear their whole career. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of J.J. Abrams either, but you can tell that he's really passionate about the project. And I'm excited about how careful they've been about casting and they're just being really 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 careful with it and they're not rushing into it i remember when i first heard that they were going to be doing a film every year i was kind of scared about that but now that we're getting spin-offs and we're basically getting everything we wanted we wanted more star wars we're getting more star wars and i don't know that it's going to be oversaturated because like you said these people are fans and they're really passionate about it so and i think it's in good hands yeah i don't i don't think they're gonna screw it up i just don't i mean the chances of every single thing they do Star Wars related gonna be amazing. I just that's not that's not logical. But I don't think I don't think that they're gonna be like terrible. You know, I don't think people are going to there's not gonna be an uprising against Disney because, you know, one of the films or, you know, animated series or something is not as great as they want it to be because um I just I think they know at this point in time uh, as long as Star Wars has been around, I think that they they know better. I mean, it sounds like threatening, but I think they know better because um, not only they're, they're fans, obviously, so they want to get it right, but it is a lot of money. You know, there's a lot of money writing on this franchise, so um, I think they'll do it right. Um, so Episode Seven's coming up, and everyone's super excited, and all the leaks are coming out, which is obviously making everybody crazy. Um, what do you think about the current leaks? Um, I think they're all a little bit overwhelming. There's been so many rumors. Everyone's been so crazy on the internet about speculating and wanting to glean like every piece of information they can from the sets and from just leaks in general. Um, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a cool concept. I love the casting. I love that a lot of the actors are unknown or have only played small roles. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Adam Driver, so the rumor that he's going to be some sort of villain is pretty awesome. Um, I think it's really cool that we're getting possibly a female lead in Daisy Ridley. Um, pretty much every rumor that's come out has been really suggestive that she's going to be one of the main leads. So I'm excited about that. Um, Gwendolyn Christie is obviously awesome. I don't think the rumor she's going to be a stormtrooper has any validity, <laughs> but that would still be pretty cool. One giant stormtrooper? <laughs> yeah. Like, um, Stormtrooper, like, Bran of Tarth meets Star Wars. Right. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what other rumors have really come out. I mean, all the set leaks are awesome. I'm just so excited that it's not just a big clusterfuck of CGI and that it's actually, like, sets and creatures and uh, it's so cool. I know. It's amazing. And being a visual effects artist myself, most people would think that I would want to see more CG. And I think there's a lot of visual effects artists that are the same. Like, the point of visual effects is to enhance the story, right? And to enhance the movie, things you can't do. Whenever they put up a green screen, instead of just building a fucking wall, that is ridiculous, you know? It, it's just ridiculous. Um, or or a, a simple, like, speeder that they could build, like they did a long time ago, they would just, it would, they would have these guys sitting in you know two on two boxes green boxes and then put the car around them and it's just ridiculous but now the pictures they've shown i mean they're doing it old school which is awesome but they've got all the newest technology as far as practical effects go so um i cannot wait to see this you know and um i'm tired of all the 
uh, all the people, the the uh, intense speculation, like where they take one little thing and then they create an entire script out of it, like of what the movie's going to be about. J.J. Um, Abrams is pretty, uh, you know, he's pretty good at hiding stuff. Um, you know, obviously, like, set leak pictures, sure, and it, who knows, maybe some costume photos later or whatever, but, I mean, the, the overall movie script and the whole plot, I think they're going to keep quiet until they decide to release it, you know, and um, people are just going crazy with it, and people are already getting pissed off at other people's ideas of what the movie's going to be about, which is just completely ridiculous. It's fucking stupid. Like, why? You're, you're ruining your, you know, your Star Wars fun, basically. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be an awesome thing. You're not supposed to get fucking pissed off because some dude online said that the movie is, you know, going to be about dragons or time travel or whatever. You know, it's stupid. So, um, they need to get over it and just enjoy it. And, like, you know, listen, you know, if you want to listen to what other people say about the movie, what it's going to be about, fine, but don't take it to heart. Like, just only take to heart what they officially release, you know, because you never know. Um, there's going to be a lot of disinformation. So, just uh, calm the fuck down, people. Um, but yeah, all the casting, they're all like unique looking people. They're, they're fresh faces, so they're obviously doing that right. Thank God the, the rumor about Tom Cruise is not true. That would not um, have worked. That would have been so awkward. Like, I don't know. I just saw Edge of Tomorrow, so I like Tom Cruise and I like his weird little brand of sci-fi, right. but no thank you. But yeah, like you were saying, I'm just excited to see people interact with an actual set. There was something really like disingenuine about some of the performances and the prequels like I I like the prequels but just some of the performances weren't compelling because you could tell that it was just a struggle to kind of interact with production I guess yeah it, they felt like video game cutscenes to me with live action people put in there yeah that's just what they felt like there's a lot so of that it was never it never sucked me in and got me gave me that warm feeling that you know the originals did and that's not just because it's the originals were when I was young and it was memorable like I understand, you know, I think we're, as adults, we can understand the difference between something that just takes you out of the moment and something that put, pulls you in, you know, and um, it's not just nostalgic, it's the quality of the work, so, but I mean, Lucas was trying to go into this all digital thing, you know, he was trying to, he was trying to bring everything into the digital age, you know, the digital, filming it digitally and, you know, sh like projecting it digitally everywhere and everything was digital, so he was just, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, it was, I, I understand he was trying to come into the future or whatever, but for Star Wars, I don't think that was a good idea. And obviously a lot of other people didn't either. Um, but also in the news, you know, Harrison Ford, he had that big injury, or everybody was, of course, speculating, you know, Harrison Ford broke his ankle, and then it turned into, you know, Harrison Ford is dead, he's never coming back to the movie. And <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> you know, well, no, you know what I mean? Like, it blew up, like he fucking broke his ankle or hurt something, and you know, like this happens a lot in filming, like people get injured and it, it delays it a little bit, but it doesn't script that they're not going to change the entire Star Wars script because he hurt his ankle. That's just ridiculous. So again, calm the fuck down people. Harrison Ford is fine. You know, like, I, and they've already shown him. He's already, he's walking around on that little, um, it's like a little crutch for his leg. You know, it's like almost like a peg leg, but it's a little crutch. And he's already getting around on that, and you know they've talked to his son, and his son said he's doing great. And there's even been an official release from, uh, you know, production saying that he's recovering quickly and everything's fine, and they're not changing the script. And so it's just another example of how people go crazy when they hear a little bit of news. I mean, that's just the world today. That's how it works. And people are people tend to go towards the negative than the positive instead of like he hurt his ankle oh he'll be fine he's he's great you know he's in good shape and all that they're like oh my god Harrison Ford is fucking dying you know his they're gonna have to amputate his fucking leg it's over you know so <laughs> like um, a Star Wars is uh, over <laughs> that's, that's not gonna happen um, so that's good news so we'll definitely be keeping up on leaks and um, either making fun of them or seriously covering them a fun mix of both um, but speaking of the prequels, we are getting kind of, I guess, a sneak peek of kind of the spirit of Episode 7 in the form of Star Wars Rebels, which is a new animated series on Disney, and it comes out in October. I'm so excited about this. Like, I don't know how you felt about the Clone Wars, but 
there were parts of the Clone Wars that I loved. Like, there were certain just, like, stories. Like, I loved all the witches. I loved Asajj Ventress. There were things about the Clone Wars I absolutely adored. But it was just, like, set in a time that I didn't really care about. Like, I don't care about the Clone Wars era. But Star Wars Rebels is right before New Hope. So it's got, like, elements of the Rebel Alliance. And we're going to see stuff from, like... 1313 and sort of like the Star Wars Underworld and Coruscant and I'm just I'm elated what do you think about everything um well like you said it's it's showing what kind of led up to the original trilogy and it's it's really exciting you know because you know that is I mean to date pretty much everyone's favorite time period in Star Wars so, so we've seen it so far you know um excluding any like extended or universe stuff but yeah, all the characters look awesome. Um, when I first saw the trailer, um, I was just... I Okay, to be honest, I got a better feeling about this than when I saw like the prequel the prequel trailers. I did. I, I, I saw the trailer for this and I was like, oh my god, it made me really excited, you know? Um, a lot of people out there are like, oh, what the fuck, it's a cartoon. I don't care. It's about the writing and what the story is and the characters. And there were stormtroopers marching and I was just... It was just awesome, and the characters. I mean, the, the Sabine, the girl character, the Man- Mandalorian. She's got this wicked armor. She's she tags stuff. She does a lot, lots of graffiti everywhere. She looks like you know she's a rebel in Star Wars Rebels, um, but uh, she just looks really kick ass. And I'm glad they've got some girl characters in this um, because I was tired of Star Wars being a sausage fest anyway. Um, I mean. Everybody wants Star Wars to be that way. I mean, mostly guys do, you know. Um, I don't even know if it's younger guys. I think it's older, jaded Star Wars fans that they, for some reason, only want dudes in Star Wars, which, uh, you know, I don't know why that is. But um, I'm just, I'm glad to see Sabine. I'm glad to see Ezra. He looks really cool. Uh, You know, he's like, uh, does whatever he has to do to survive. Um, But he's obviously a little mystery, too. Like, you want to know what's going on with him and... I don't know. I'm just I'm really excited about the show, like the what led up to everything, you know, um, and it's coming soon. So I'm, I'm already like getting like a tick, like waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about the ship, the ship too. Ghost looks pretty awesome. Yeah, um, I'm excited about Hera, obviously Sabine, because Sabine just looks rad. I love that she likes to blow stuff up. That's so cool. Like it's kind of it's a weird departure for Disney to have this like chick who likes graffiti art and likes to blow stuff up like i'm excited about that um but and warning, then, we don't we're not promoting blowing stuff up unless it's a really fucking awesome explosion <laughs> anyways um yeah no i really like sabine um i'm excited about Hera. i just think it's gonna be an awesome show i think that the characters look awesome, and I think that I kind of like the animation a little more, too, for some reason. I know that there are people who have critiqued it and said it looks like Bratz dolls, but I'm not buying it. I don't think it looks that way. Maybe I'm just, like, a sucker for the Disney treatment of stuff, but I like it. And I don't know. So one of the big complaints, though, I've heard is that we're going to be getting a lot of overlay with the movies and the show. So it's going to be the first time that, like, the things from the expanded universe, because technically Rebels is part of the expanded universe because it's not the actual films, like the feature films, they're going to have elements that talk to each other and like are the same. So again, this kind of plays into this whole like fan paranoia that the expanded universe is just getting scrapped because we're going to be getting alternate origin stories. So we might see like a younger Han Solo. We might see, well, we're pretty much confirmed that we're going to see Lando and Chewbacca but they're not going to be the stories that we know from the books. So I don't know. I just I have a weird relationship to people kind of freaking out about that because I really, really like the expanded universe. I really like the books. Obviously, I like Mara Jade. Um, I cosplay as her. But I don't know that those stories belong in our canon, like films and the TV show. Like, I don't want to see a TV show based off the books. One, I mean, does anyone ever really do books well? Not really, unless it's like The Lord of the Rings and even that, just, you know, it's a stretch. But I just, I want new stories and I'm really excited about new stories. And I feel like people are kind of clinging to this really niche aspect of Star Wars. So I don't know, what is your opinion? 
don't get me wrong. I, like, I completely understand the not wanting to see the same stories that are in the books, but I would love to see Mara Jade, uh, you know, live action. It's something, a TV show or a movie, but um, not not necessarily in those specific stories, but she's just such an awesome character. I think it would be cool to see her, you know, portrayed somehow um, and some other characters. But uh, I agree that taking something from a book, usually, obviously, people are always pissed off that it's never as good as the book, and especially if it's Star Wars, people are going to be even going more ape shit over it. But... I don't know. I think I think a lot of EU stuff would serve better as a TV series or small mini series, you know, where they talk about certain characters or little storylines or whatever. Um, so they're not dra dragged on, um, you know, forever, and they they get boring and they start having to use material from the you know from the books and stuff like that. Um, but I think I definitely think we probably will see a live action show. Um, but I'm not really sure what they're gonna do. I mean, if they're they're doing more films, right, with the classic characters, and then they're doing the break-off films or the spin-off films from the classic characters. Um, I'm not sure they would just rehash that in a TV series. So, um, you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna make a live action series of what they're doing with Rebels. So, what are they gonna do? You know, um, because it's just it makes sense. They're doing movies, they're doing um, animation shows, and they've been talking about doing live action forever. So, they're probably gonna do it. Um, but obviously none of that's even being talked about right now, so none of that crazy fan wild speculation. But uh, I'm just excited to see everything that they do. Um, and back to the EU stuff, I do like a lot of the characters in the EU, and I think it would be cool to see in live action. Yeah, I mean, I think that there might be small, like, nods to the expanded universe in the films. I mean, if Luke has kids... I, the rumor I heard, and I don't know if this is, has any validity, but I've heard rumors that Luke is going to have children in the new movies, but you're never going to get, really get to see who the mom is, so it's kind of going to be, like, left to fans right. to decide, which I don't know if that's true, but, like, that would be a really cool way to go about it. Like, that would be the right way to, like, treat it, I guess, kind of, like, a, yeah. a nod to the fans, but I don't know. That, that just makes more sense, because, I mean, the, the movies have taken stuff from the expanded universe, like, because she can right. course on and stuff. But, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, like, I understand not taking the, the actual Star Wars line of Star Wars Episode 1, 2, 3, 4, those specific, the main Star Wars movies. But, I mean, maybe they if they do Star Wars movies specifically for people to shut up about the extended universe, you know, Star Wars um, Expanded or whatever, and they, they cover stuff that people want. Because... People are going to keep complaining, right? They're just going to. And if they, they make a bunch of movies and people still want to see it, they might figure out a way to do it, you know? And if they do, then... And they've done a good job with all this other stuff, then we should probably trust them and see what they're going to do. But um, I I think they're going to... I mean, the EU is too big to not ever address it, I think, uh, other than just, like, little nods. I think that they'll, they might... They'll probably take characters, the biggest characters from the EU, and somehow make something out of it whether it's TV show or, you know, a separate line of movies or something, even if they're just made for TV. I mean, they have an infinite amount of stuff they can do. So I wouldn't count anything out. But, um, you know, we're not all going to be happy with what they every single thing they do, and we're not, you know, we're not going to be disappointed either. So um, I'm just glad that we have a shitload of Star Wars stuff, like, for the foreseeable future. You know, it's not like, oh, we're going to make three movies and then fuck you for, you know... A decade or whatever so uh yeah i know it's gonna be so much new stuff it's really exciting yeah um speaking of star wars tv shows so i don't know if this is because i'm so much younger but i had no idea that there was like an ewok tv show yeah like an animated one yeah you didn't know that like i had no no i had no clue i was reading star wars insider the other day and they were talking about something a character from the Ewok show and I was like what the fuck <laughs> I had no idea that there was like an R2D2 show and like a C3 Pound R2D2 show and an Ewok TV show yeah was it just like that's crazy I had no idea there's a lot of stuff I mean they a lot of stuff that was tried anyway you know I know um, I know about the Ewok adventures like I remember those movies, yeah the Ewok movies but, um yeah but like I don't know I I mean you're from a different generation so obviously you started so it's not your fault that you didn't know about those, you know? Um, oh, thanks. I'm forgiven. Well, yeah, I mean, but plus you don't like Ewoks, <laughs> just like a lot of people don't like Ewoks now. 
um, even though I don't mind Ewoks. You know, they're cute little bears that helped fight, you know. Um, they almost ate some people, but uh, that's okay, <laughs> right? I mean, they're they're like tribal, you know. What, what the fuck are they going to do? They don't have Starbucks and fucking, you know, Pizza Hut out there, so... I mean, that's so weird to me. I don't know. They just, I've never really liked the Ewoks. They, they never fit for me. They're like, yeah, like tribal little bears. I'm like, what? No. Yeah. Tribal little tiny bears. I mean, that's fucking creepy. You know? I mean, yeah. they couldn't have had real bears. That would have been awkward. These giant grizzly bears like, oh, let us help you. You know, they had to be some strange <laughs> thing. Um, you know, but I mean, obviously yeah. I remember Wicket the most cause he was like the main one and I had this, I still have like yeah. my stuffed Wicket and, um, you know, uh, I don't know, like, Return of the Jedi was the first one I saw, so I, you know, I just, I, I took it all in. I liked it. I was a kid, so most kids liked Ewoks, you know? It wasn't like, the kids were like, ah, I fucking hate little bears. They they didn't do that. Obviously, I think... I, I did. I didn't like the Ewoks. That was always the most boring part for me. I like the whole, I like the whole first half of Return of the Jedi, like... I don't know. I really liked Jabba's palace. I think the part where, like, I didn't really know what was going on, but the part that, because obviously I watched Return of the Jedi first, but the part where Leia frees Han, I love that part. Like, I still love it. It's so, like, epic. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about Ewoks I like that more than Ewoks. Ewoks, okay? We have to finish the Ewoks. But I like that stuff more than Ewoks. Okay, but the Ewoks is what I'm saying is, like, they sold a shitload of Ewok merchandise, okay? Like, kids loved Ewoks. They did. And but when they grew up then they're like, oh fuck Ewoks, because they're not cool, they're little bears and that's not what I want in my Star Wars universe. I'm just saying I've been a Star Wars fan forever and I don't mind Ewoks. Okay? I'm not jumping <laughs> on the Ewok hate bandwagon. There's gotta be no hate crimes <laughs> against Ewok stuffed animals or Ewok toys. I'm not gonna be burning them. Nothing. Okay? I have no problem with Ewoks. And I like Warwick <laughs> Davis. Okay? I've always liked him. Well, so who doesn't? Um I mean what else is he gonna do? He couldn't have played a giant grizzly bear. I mean, how awkward would that have been? Uh, He's Willow. We had like two or three of them on each other's shoulders playing a grizzly bear. That wouldn't have been right. They need jobs too. See, see, now you feel bad. I know we no, played I Willow. I know. I just, I like. I'm just saying. Don't like everybody's hating on Ewoks so much, and just stop hating on Ewoks. Everybody, like, mass majority of people did like them as kids, and then they grew up, and then they hated on them. You know, so because they think they're like babyish or kiddish or whatever. Um, I'm not saying Ewoks are the best fucking thing that happened in Star Wars universe. I'm just saying that like I don't hate Ewoks. All right. Well, now that you know everything about Ryan's Ewok obsession, we can go ahead and say thank you for watching our first episode. And I hope you enjoyed Force Cult. Uh, we will be here talking about leaks, talking about our hopes and fears for episode seven, and just our thoughts on fandom in general. So thanks for joining us.